your superhero critic and I'll stay super as long as you stay awesome and welcome to the second episode of this year's Gabuary week and we're continuing with more Mario after the critical flop of the live action film in the 1990s Nintendo became understandably weary about making films using any properties that they owned however Miyamoto became interested in developing a film during the virtual console service by 2016 they had begun discussing a new film and by 2018 Illumination and Universal were set to produce it and by 2021 the cast of Charlie Day, Jack Black, Keegan-Michael Key, Anya Taylor-Joy, and Chris Pratt had been announced. And I am very hesitant on whether or not I'm going to enjoy this version of Mario. So let's sit down and enjoy this animated version of the Italian Plumber and see if it's good or yet another fungus-covered shithole. Our movie begins with Bowser's castle floating above the Penguin King's snow kingdom, and while they try to put up a good fight, snowballs just don't cut it against a fire-breathing turtle as he melts their entire kingdom down to the water. Don't you lie. You have always wanted to kill those penguins. Anyone who has played N64 Mario knows how annoying those penguins are. My point stands. Bowser takes the Power Star and we jump to the real world where we get a small commercial for the Mario Brothers Plumbing Company. Okay, so th this is one of the things that a lot of people don't like. Nowadays, animated films, they're not focusing on actual voice actors. You know, it's one thing to have, you know, someone like Robin Williams or something play a comedic character when they're a comedian. Someone like Chris Pratt, who has no voice acting skills whatsoever and literally just uses their own voice for every single character that they try to voice, is not voice acting. And to snub the voice actor of Mario from this role is an insult to the franchise and honestly probably the only negative thing I have to say about this film. Stop fucking over voice actors. Yeah. Jumpman Cameo congratulates the brothers on their commercial but Spike from the Wrecking Crew video game just insults them. The stupid Mario brothers. You know I wonder if Rich Alvarez understood that that was a reference to them. Spike continues to insult and taunt them before they get an actual call for a leaky faucet. This then turns into the brothers rushing off to the call, but the way that it is done is amazing as it is an entire reference to all of the 2D platforming you would get from a lot of Mario games. And as an avid gamer, seeing this nod to the source material is awesome and I give Illumination major props for it. The plumbing call then becomes a slapstick event as the brothers try to fend off the owner's dog for breaking its bone while the pipes are bursting all to the tune of Habanera by Carmen. When the brothers get home, they are ridiculed by their uncles, one of which looks like a skinny Weird Al Yankovic, and their father continues to just put Mario down. I think you're nuts. You don't leave a steady job for some crazy dream, and the worst part? You're bringing your brother down with you. Oh look, it's every family dinner I ever had growing up. Thank you for childhood memories. I'm gonna cry now. 
We get an NES reference as Mario is literally playing one and playing Kid Icarus before turning on the news in sadness. We see that the water incident from earlier has now become citywide as Brooklyn is beginning to flood. The brothers head down to the city's pipes to try to save the day, finding a huge abandoned area with a popular green pipe. And it's not long before both of them are then sucked through the said pipe and unfortunately separated during the teleporting. Hey, how is this gonna be okay? I'm telling you, nothing can hurt us as long as we're together. Thanks a lot, Mario. You just had to say it. Mario lands in the Mushroom Kingdom and he meets Toad, played by King and Michael Key, and he lets him know Luigi is now in the Dark Zone, owned by Bowser, but he'll take him to see the princess as she can probably help them. Meanwhile, Luigi's guests are so kind as he's surrounded by a group of drive owns that chase him all the way into Bowser's castle, when he's then surrounded by an army of Shy Guys. Toad takes Mario throughout the city where we see plenty of in-game references as well as homage to the 3D aspect version of platforming that the franchise is known for, complete with floating bricks and pipe tunnels. Peach's plan to help save the Toads is to get help from the Kong army. Mario then finally meets Peach for the first time. <laughs> Peach clearly takes self-defense classes. Peach is overexcited that she's found another human as Mario asks for help finding Luigi. She instantly agrees to help before we get a training montage to see what Mario can do. And the thing I love the most about this montage is that it's basically a level straight out of a video game as Mario has to avoid obstacle after obstacle from piranha plants to the falling platforms. He almost beats it until... That's gotta hurt. Peach does what she can to try to cheer Mario up before we go to Bowser. We see his forces are celebrating as he rallies them up and finally reveals his plan. Of marrying Peach. That is it. Peach, Mario, Bowser, BDSM throuple filled with kidnapping kinks. It's officially been confirmed. We get a flashback of Luigi missing Mario for being his protector. Has Mario and Peach set off to the Kong village and Toad decides to join them. We then hear Jack Black's popular song from the film, which is a hilarious concept on its awesomeness. And as a fan of Tenacious D, I see why the song became so popular. Kamek alerts Bowser of the appearance of Mario and we see his sadistic side. Meanwhile, our heroes decide to rest for the night with Peach showing Mario the power of the fire flower. We get the backstory of how Peach wandered into the world as a baby, and the Toads chose to make her the queen. Were none of the Toads actually concerned about a baby crawling into their world? Or are they just like, oh, person! No, no, no response? Okay. Bowser then becomes a sadist as he tortures Luigi into telling him information about Mario. Once the information is spilled, Luigi gets thrown into a cage and dangled over lava with the penguins from the beginning. We then meet the most interesting character named Luma Lee, who is oh so happy to be captured. How long have you guys been in here? Time, like hope, is an illusion. Please, we are depressed Ooh. enough! There's got to be a way out of here. There's no escape. The only hope is the sweet relief of death. Oh, oh, you've got to be kidding me. You know, I would be depressed and eager for death as well if my only purpose in life was to die after eating a bunch of food and then turn into a giant star. 
Mario Galaxy is fucked up if you've never played it! Meanwhile, at the Kong Village, we meet a blonde Kong that takes Mario and Peach on a cart ride throughout the village, while Take On Me plays, and looks like the levels from Mario Kart. Once they meet Cranky and ask for help, he originally turns them down, but then says if Mario can beat Donkey Kong, he will help. So we then go to said fight, that is a clear one-sided thing, but they showcase a bunch of different power-ups from the games, including the mini mushroom and the cat bell. Aww, he looks adorable! <laughs> oh, he's so cute! Makes me want to get a cat suit and cut it with my own cat. Mario eventually ends the fight very quickly once he understands how his cat powers work. So the Kongs agree to help by giving them access to building new carts for everyone showcasing the most iconic carts from the Mario Kart franchise for each character. Bowser then shows us how he will propose to Peach using Kamek as a stand-in. Ew, I think I put in the wrong Mario movie. Bowser sends out his troop to meet Mario's group on the way to the bridge, and Mario notices something about the path they are taking. The road is about to end. Roads? Where we're going, we don't need roads. Landing on Rainbow Road is amazing to Mario. Is there anything like this in your world? No! But they do make certain people afraid of them just by looking at them. Rainbows are weird. The ambush begins and we get an amazing Mario Kart-like scene that shows us just about everything you would get from the games. From the upside down roads, to using Koopa shells as weapon, to even showcasing Double Dash. However, the dreaded blue shell paratrooper gets his revenge, attacking DK and Mario, sending them to the water below, allowing Bowser's men to capture the Kong. Mario saves DK's life as they come to the ocean, only to be eaten by a giant cheap cheap. Peach tells the Toads to evacuate, but it's too late, as Bowser and his men take over the kingdom, forcing Peach to agree to marry him when he attacks the main toad. The prisoners then get told they are being sacrificed, while DK and Mario argue like siblings. I am more than a guy who smashes things! Okay, Ralph, calm down a little bit. The two escape the cheap cheap using a rocket as we get cameos from King Boo and King Bomba Bomb at the wedding, and Toad gives Peach a secret bouquet which she uses to bring out an ice flower kicking butt and stopping the prisoners from being sacrificed. Mario and DK then attack a huge group of minions using power-ups, showcasing even more 3D Mario aspects, and we see DK with fire powers for the first time, while Mario gets the famous Tanuki suit. Luigi almost falls to his death, but his brother saves him just in time. <sighs> Mario, why do you look like a bear? What is this? Your brother is now a furry. Just accept it. Bowser breaks out of the ice and demands to launch the huge bullet bill towards the Toad Kingdom, forcing Mario to fly with it to antagonize it, making it follow him to a warp pipe, blowing up the bullet. Unfortunately, this explosion begins to suck everyone into the pipe into the real world, including Bowser and his castle. This leads to the final fight as an angry Bowser just beats the crap out of our hero. This makes him want to give up until he sees himself in his own commercial, giving him the courage that he needed. Peach helps Mario get the superstar as Luigi jumps in front of Bowser's fire to save his brother. This allows both of them to get the star power and we get an awesome scene of them taking down Koopa after Koopa and eventually working enough to beat down Bowser for good. Peach 
feeds Bowser the mini mushroom, which leads to him to be in a jar, as both worlds are now saved, and our film ends showing us that they decide to live in the Mushroom Kingdom for the inevitable sequel. Despite mixed reviews, the film grossed 1.3... Despite mixed reviews, the film grossed $1.36 billion worldwide, breaking multiple box office records and becoming the second highest grossing films of 2023, only behind Barbie, which of course is leading to a potential sequel down the road. This movie is honestly 100% better than the live action film. You feel like you're in the Mushroom Kingdom. You are acknowledged with all of the characters and references from uh, game to game. And it just feels like actual Mario. And personally, I can't wait for the sequel. That being said, this year's Gamuary is over. I wanted to get more videos, but... I, I've got a busy life outside of doing these videos right now, and I just, and I'm limited to doing two a month at this point in time, and I just, due to work schedule, I really didn't have time until the end of the month. However, our 300th review is right around the corner, so hopefully I could get something out for that. I'll see you next time. That being said... I'm your superhero critic, and I'll stay super as long as you stay awesome. Now that's a happy ending. Or is it? Because everything's over now, and all that's left is you and the infinite void. Kind of makes you want to play saxophone, huh? <laughs>